Today on Code Hack Moment, we will learn how to add a SQLite database to an ASP.NET Core project using Entity Framework Core Code First. To get going, we're going to add a SQLite database as a local file. I'm going to start by going to Manage NuGet Packages and add a couple of important packages. I'm going to need the Entity Framework Core Design. as well as the Entity Framework Core.SQLite. Okay, and we'll just check and make sure that we have actually added those dependencies. And it looks like we've got Core Design and Core SQLite. Looks like we're in good shape. Next thing I want to do is add a new folder to put all my data in. And then I want to add a new class. And this is going to be our app user.cs file. Okay, I pasted this class in. It has a few fields in it. User ID, provider, name, identifier, username, password, email, first name, last name, mobile, and a string for roles. Then I want to add one more property for role list. And all this will do is take the common delimited list of roles that we could add to a user and split them out into a list of strings uh, that define the role list. And we'll use that later. Let's add another class. I'm going to add an auth db context. And this will inherit from db context in entity framework. In the interest of time, I've just copy and pasted this. We have one DB set of type app user. We have our constructor auth DB context. And we have our on model creating, where we have the model builder dot entity of app user, where we defined all of, all of the properties that matter. And we can set things like which is the key and what the max length is. And finally, we have this entity dot has data, which is seed information. We can pre-seed our data with a Bob tester user, uh, and we've included the roles of admin. Next, we want to go to the app settings JSON, and we want to add a connection string for our database. The connection string I've put in here for the default connection is data source data slash slash app dot db. We'll see that this should put an app.db file in the data folder when we're all done. Next, we want to go to our startup and it appear above authentication. Order doesn't really matter, but this is where I want to put it. Let's add a services.addb context or auth db context. And we'll need to solve that. some options here and we'll use options.use sqlite solve that as well all right too i guess and then we'll do configuration.get connection string and we want the default connection semicolon there and i think that will be all we need in the startup now it's time to go to the package manager console and in the package manager console, we want to run a few different commands. So the first one is .NET tool install. And I like to install this globally. You don't have to, but I think you'll use it enough that it makes sense to do it. Okay, it says I already have it installed, so that's great. If you need to, you can update to the latest by running .NET tool update dash dash global. Uh, .NET dash EF. Okay, cool. So now we have we've made sure we have the latest. Now I want to what I want to do is run a .NET EF migrations add initial, and I want that to be put into the data folder. Except it said no project was found. So let's look in this directory. 
we're in the solutions directory, so let's go down a directory. Now let's run that command again. It's done, and you'll see that we have a, a migration file that's been added here, and we can look at this migration file. And there's two methods. There's an up method and then a down method. So creation and a destruction. And during the creation, what it's going to do is create an app users table in the database. As this is the primary key and it's going to insert this data. So that's all based on the, the auth DB context that we created on the on model creating. This tool, the migration tool, looked at that and realized it needed to make sure that that table existed and to do the insert data as part of that. So the last thing to do here is to run .NET EF database update. We now have an app.db table here. So if we want to take a look at this and see what's in it, we can open this with a tool that I haven't registered yet. So I should add that tool. Okay, and it's called DB Browser for SQLite. And I'm just gonna go ahead and select that. Now we'll just click open. And now you can see here that there's a couple of different tables that it created, one for app users, one for EF migrations history, and then the SQLite sequence. So if we look in our app users table, you'll see that we already have a record in here, and that was from our seed data, Bob Tester for our Bob Tester user. So that looks pretty good. And that is all it takes to add and connect a SQLite database to an ASP.NET Core project with EF Core code first. Click the card at the end of this video to see the rest of this project in action. Thanks for watching.